Oh, hey, Liz. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am so good. Thank you so much for taking time to chat with our students. This is so cool. <laughs> oh, I'm excited to do it. And I didn't realize it, but I think you're a new springer, aren't you? Well, I've been going there for the past couple of weeks because I am super excited about this series. Do you go there? I do. I thought I saw you the other day, but we were, it was kind of like in all the mass of the humans. Yes. And I said, if I see her again, I'm going to grab her. <laughs> oh, good. Yes, yes, you should. That'd be awesome. That would well, be gorgeous. Yes. Um, okay, so I, we are going to steal about 15 minutes of your time. And what we thought would be really cool is having guest speakers talk to our paras who will be graduating in May. Some of them are already teacher of record, so they already have their own classroom starting the semester. And we thought since it's completely online doing some Zoom sessions with um, just fantastic people in the field and as a 2013 Kansas Teacher of the Year and doing all the fun technology things and global communication, just all the cool things that you have going on, just what you can kind of give our students as far as advice and share some of your knowledge with us if you don't mind. Oh, it's my pleasure. And um, how deep we want to go? Should we just like throw a bunch of stuff out there or? Yes. Okay, we'll just throw stuff out. Yes, perfect. <laughs> well, everybody, I'm Diane Smokorowski. I, like she said, I'm the 2013 Kansas Teacher of the Year and I work over in Andover. And my job has been known as an instructional technology coach for the last four or five years, but that title has changed. Now I am the technology and innovation lead teacher um, because I'm still a teacher contract and coach just sounds so like data driven. That's not what I do at all. My job is to sit down and brainstorm with teachers on ways that they can innovate with project-based learning, technology in the classroom, global collaboration, uh, the Kansas redesign. I just, I'm kind of like their nerd on call, which is a pretty good <laughs> gig, I will say, yeah. on the way around. That's awesome. And the best part for me is that I get to hang out with kindergarten all the way up to senior grades of teachers. And I just get to be somebody different every single day. I absolutely love that. I support about, uh, on my staff, on my, my team supports, around 380 teachers, but I kind of run about a hundred of those people. So yeah, it's, it's pretty good gig. Yeah. And like today it. I thought I'd share, with, oh, it's so fun. Um, today I thought I'd share with you my passion for global learning, if that sounds like a plan. That is fantastic. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So when I try to think about what I need to do for lesson planning with students, I really think about three questions that I ask myself every time we sit down with a teacher to lesson plan. The first thing that we do is what do I have to assess? So again, we're always going back to those standards and I think it's important to mention that the common core is not meant to be taught in isolation. It is not, we're only gonna focus on this one little standard and that's all we're going to do. When you go that direction, you have a tendency to design lesson plans as checklists and that's not how they're designed at all. The common core is meant to be taught in clusters so that if you find two, three, four of these that can be merged together for a deeper conversation, you're going the right direction for the Common Core. So it's not about going from the beginning of the textbook to the end of the textbook. It's about designing something you can go deeper and more um, investigative through the content. So that's the first thing that we do is consider what is it I have to assess. Number two, what experiences do I want students to have through, this, through my time with them? And I, I really pushed people to think about, I, it's not what I want them to understand for that test on Friday. You know, I don't want them to go through a bunch of worksheets so that we can master some test. It's really, what do I want them to remember when they're 40, not that test on Friday? So what experiences do I need to design in my classroom that has a permanent impact? That's when you're going to see that transfer occur with students. So if I am studying, like a fifth grade teacher might be studying uh, the American Revolution, and 
you know, I may have to cover different jobs of the colonial area, of why we went to war. You know, there could be some of those pieces in it. But what do I want you to remember about that experience way down your life? Maybe more of I need you to understand that you have inalienable rights, that every one of us has an opportunity to be a part of this country and to have an active voice. So there's a little bit deeper drive in all of that. What can I design in order for you to experience that? So maybe our students need to have a conversation with a legislator. Maybe they need to talk to a historical um, museum, maybe somebody at Smithsonian, whatever that may be. How do I design that? So they can look back someday and say, you know, when I was in fifth grade, we had this really cool experience where I talked with, um, historians or reenactors who dress up as George and Martha Washington and talk about what it is to, to embrace myself and immerse myself in that time era. That's going to stick a whole lot longer than the let's map out the direction in which Washington, you know, across the Delaware. It, there's more to it than that, right? Right. So then that third piece is who do they need to talk to? So again, let's retract back a moment. What am I assessing? What experiences do I want them to have? And then who do they need to talk to? Do they need to talk to another class of like-minded or similar aged children? Do they need to talk to somebody in England and have a different perspective? Do they need to talk to that legislator? But when you start to think about that third question, who do my kids need to talk to? Now let's talk about how that fits in the Kansas redesign. Real world applications, different perspectives, authentic, and also allows you to have that success skills. So we're going to be learning how to talk to people professionally. And when my students have a Skype call, I make sure that they stand up a little taller. They have to learn to present themselves. They have to take, they have to own this, right? And you will start to see how this intertwines all the way across the redesign. What's really interesting is there's data that says all around the globe, there's only about 15,000 teachers who use things like Skype in their classroom. Really? And yeah, this is really interesting to me, right? Because nobody thinks like this. We think about, you know, what worksheet packet we need to run off next. Well, the first thing you need to do is think about you never need to run a worksheet packet <laughs> off ever again. <laughs> There's that, right? Um, but they, this is not something that they've thought about. But when you start to embed that into how you design the classroom experience, then you're opening your doors up to so much rich and curious conversations that you could not have designed as the educator yourself, right? I love and that. I love that. And then just to, to, to pause for a quick second. So as a brand new teacher, how in the world do I figure out who to talk to and how to, and how to go about doing this? I am so glad you asked that because that's what I'm going to show you here. Okay. Yeah, good, good, good. I'm going to do a screen share. I'm going to share my screen here. And we are going to take you over to Google. Everybody can Google, right? Yes. One would, one would assume, right? Hopefully but there's so. some, we hopefully so. There are some Google tricks that you need to know in order to find some of this goodness. The first thing you need to do is you think about the career or the, some, like a title of some sort that allows you to reach into that, um, into that topic. And here's what's crazy, my friends. There is somebody who is, a, who is passionate about anything. There are people out there who are passionate about paper towels. Like they do this for a living. And if you were covering something that talked about paper and resources, there's somebody you can talk to. There is somebody who is passionate about toothpicks. There is someone who's passionate about cell phone usage. You name it, there's somebody out there who's in this field. So think anything is possible. I'll start that. Awesome. Good. But when you think about a job, let's say you're doing something like entomologist. We spell it correctly. When we just do that regular Google search for entomologist, that's giving you everything, right? And I spelling spelling does matter, but thankfully Google helps with that as well. <laughs> now, 
I'm trying to find someone who can talk to my students. So I can't just Google entomologist and hopefully I can find someone. What I need to do is to narrow down my search a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can hopefully see this a little better. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna add site next to that, twitter.com. By using the word site, that narrows down all of my Google search just to one website. So now I'm only looking for an entomologist at Twitter, nowhere else. Okay. And, and when I search, Twitter? well, we'll get to that. Okay? okay. Perfect. The best part about it is everybody at Twitter has a profile <laughs> and usually they have their jobs listed in their profile. So that's, that's a great part about that. That's you okay. can use LinkedIn as well. It's not as effective because it just depends if they have a public profile or not. Um, but you can start with this and then I'll show you a couple other tricks to try. Now, with this one, I'm also getting a hashtag with entomologists. I'm getting a little bit of everything and it's coming in the history of Twitter. I need to find somebody I know I can reach out to who still has this job, you know, somebody that's relevant today. So what I'm going to do is come over here and click more. Uh, let me take that back here. That is not what I wanted to do. I want to choose over here tools. That's what I was looking for. So I'm looking for tools. And then it's going to be fussy with me. There we go. Over here on the left, now I have two filters and one of them is time. And I'm going to choose maybe the past month. Now it's giving me results of people and organizations who have been posting recently. Okay. So let's take a look and do part of the vetting process. So what the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at that profile. So she's an entomologist, biodiversity explorer. She, she has a profile that looks promising, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take a look at the post that she puts out there. Do I want somebody who's just writing opinionated things on blogs or do I want somebody who really is passionate about bugs? Thinking she's got that qualification, right? Yeah. <laughs> but here's the best part of all. She has a website. So when I click on this, this is taking me just to who she is. And my friends, here's the best part. Contact right there. Everybody has a contact us page. And when I select that, there's where I can send a quick email. That say, hi, we're a group of second grade stu teachers, or students, I'm sorry who are studying bugs, and we would really need to talk to somebody who is passionate about that. Do you have 15 minutes that you'd be willing to do a Skype call with us? 15 minutes is the glorious number because it doesn't feel like you are taking their entire lunch hour, right? Right. They can give you just a little bit of time. It's also important that you ask questions to your experts that you cannot Google. If we want kids to have someone to talk to, we want to reach out and help them discover answers to their curiosities. If they have a deriving question that they can't simply Google the answer to, then that's a perfect time for an expert to talk to them. And that ex expert will talk to them as kids. Hooray! They don't have to know, you know, jargon that's up here for higher ed to understand. Right. Man, that is so cool. What a neat resource that is right there that so many people don't realize is right at their fingertips. That oh, is it's, amazing. It's pretty awesome. And the other thing that you can do is do an entomology museum. And people who work at museums, they like to talk to schools. And often they will reach out and have um, outreach to talk to community school things right away. Here's one at KU, just not that far away. And every one of them also has a phone number that you can call and ask those same kinds of questions. And often they'll say, well, how, what do you want me to do? I said, can you talk to people in like a conversation? And they go, yeah. I said, could you do the same thing with seven-year-olds, 14-year-olds? Uh-huh. I said, do you have Skype? <laughs> and they'll sometimes say, well, yes or no. Well, can I set up a Zoom call and send you a link? They'll say yes. And that's all you need to do. I can tell you that we have done this for about six, seven years. 
And anybody that I've reached out to, I have about a 94% success rate because people want to talk to kids. Mm -hmm. Kids just need to know that they can reach out and ask other people as well. That is awesome. So have you had, um, in that such a great response rate, do you have a hard time figuring out a good time for them that works well with your kiddos, whether I know middle school, they have the block scheduling kind of concerns. Elementary, they typically have their kiddos all day long. So what are some things, have you done recorded sessions or what are some ways that you kind of go around the whole timing issue? Well, if we do Zoom call, then you can record that. Mm -hmm. uh, Skype now is going, I don't know if it's, it's officially in now, but they have a recording piece as well. Google Hangouts you can record. Awesome. So you can do that. For our secondary buildings, what we try to do is partner with a librarian and partner with our other people in our departments. So maybe all of the eighth grade social studies teachers come together for this. Awesome. And with that, we'll go to the librarian and say, what we'd like to do is have a different call every hour. If you'll hit the start and stop button, we'll bring our kids in and we'll just do a collective call with everyone. And the librarian and the teachers work together to decide, okay, maybe first hour, we'll do um, a reenactor who does the Revolutionary War. Maybe we'll talk to a museum the second hour, third hour, so that you as the teacher don't have to hear the same thing <laughs> all day long. <laughs> and it gives a chance to have those different perspectives to come in. I love that. You can always record them and recycle, but then again, you're hearing that same thing over and over again. Right. When we have the littles, we can just do, say, here are my open slots, what works with your slots, and let's see if we can't make that magic together. Perfect. The second thing you can do is if the time zones are way off, let's say you want to talk to a school in Prague or in uh, Southeast Asia, you can't do a live call easily you can do Flipgrid conversations. So you leave a video message, your partner receives that, responds in a video message, and they're called Grid Pals. You can have those conversations going in two minute video, responses back and forth, and you can recycle those every single hour without having to take up a lot of class time. And what was that called again? I've not heard of that. Flip, what did you oh, say it was? Flipgrid. Flipgrid, Flip -grid. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And it's free. <laughs> that was going to be my next question. How much does this cost? Yay. Okay, good. This, this is your pricing. And the best part about it is it's so simple to use. Think message board with video. Mm. So I leave a message, you respond with a message. I leave a message, respond. And it keeps a running track of that. So you can have it doing with, between classes. You can have it doing, doing with authors and students. It, the, it's endless and it's protected between you and your guest speaker. Okay, so then the, the um, concerns maybe from principals saying, oh, I don't want my kids out on the social media stuff, it is contained. So there is, there is no safety risks with that. Beautiful. Correct. I love that. Just like we're doing the Zoom call here, mm -hmm. um, now, we do have a few students who are not allowed to be on the internet. Um, you may have those restrictions. We don't take that experience away from the students. We just have them sit outside of the camera view. That's Perfect. the only difference. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so what other global communication advice, if somebody is completely, this is way out of their comfort zone. I want to create experiences for my students, but I am so scared. What would you tell them? I would say, let's start with something simple, like a mystery Skype. Have you ever played mystery Skype, Liz? I have not played mystery Skype, but it sounds amazing. So this has its own hashtag. If you even Google mystery Skype, there's a curriculum guide that's written by teachers who play this game often, but it's a game of 20 questions. And you do that via the Skype call or a Zoom call, whatever you have, mm -hmm. and you don't tell the other class your location. They have to guess where it is that you live. Oh, wow. So we start very broad. Like, are, is your state close to an ocean? And here in Kansas, we'd say, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Does your state start with the vowel? You know, is it west of the Mississippi? And eventually they narrow down like, could you be in Kansas? Sure enough, we are. 
playing a game like that takes about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. And you're not even restricted to things like geography. You could do mystery animal, mystery author, mystery job, mystery periodic element, <laughs> whatever it is. It's just a game of guessing. And each side chooses something to, to hide, you know, like our location or a mystery number, whatever that may be. And then it's that 20 question back and forth. Is your this, is your state this, is your animal that? And through that game, it breaks the ice and allows the conversations to flow a little bit easier because now we have a common conversation started. That I is, would highly recommend starting that. Okay, that is wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. I feel like I have learned so much and I want, I want to use all this kind of fun stuff and <laughs> Google people. Now my final question with the Twitter, I don't have to have a Twitter account in order to do the Google search, correct? Which is the you beauty surely? of it because I know that some people don't do some social media, which what, to each their own, but that is nice to know that you can use those resources without having to go through your own personal social media if you didn't want to. So that is amazing. And it, it's just an easy way to find a website yeah. to get you to your contact. And like you said, you don't have to have those, but I do also encourage you to look at the people in your own network. Maybe you have a cousin who works as a stuntman in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some really interesting math and physics that could go along with that. Maybe you have a, a friend in college way back when who works in Washington, DC. Think of the people that you're already super friends with so you can call them and say, hey, I need you to help me with my kids. They're <laughs> never gonna say no. Right, like today, hey Diane, you're a rock star. Do you mind helping me out with this? So yes, we have such a good network and, and I enjoy how educators are always willing you know, to step out and and help one another. So thank you so much for your time. I know our students are going to be just blessed with this information and everything. So enjoy your evening and thank you again so much. You're welcome. Everybody have a great time. See ya. Yay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.